Hi, welcome back. Um, finally got a chance to um, start playing this game. Uh, it's the blue and gray quad Shiloh from SPI. Um, I'm not going to use the oh the rules from Elal. I guess it was um, where units uh, lose strength point, you know, strength points and all that type of stuff. Uh, just not going to have time, and I don't know uh, how well that's going to work. I may try that at a later date, some other time. Right now, I'm going to just kind of go through the game. I'm going to play it, and I'm going to come back. Oh, probably in between turns, beginning of the game turn, or in, you know, after one side moves or the, and has combat or something like that. Just kind of, you know, give you an idea of the flow of the battle um, as it's represented in this game. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm not going to make these videos. Uh, I'm going to try to keep them around 10, 15 minutes, I guess. Uh, the one I did the other day, that was 30 minutes. It took like about 7 hours to upload on YouTube. And, um, well, I'd like to keep them a little shorter than that. And so, I'm shooting for 5, 10, 15 minute mark. So, anyway, without further ado. Um, in this game... The game starts basically with the Confederate movement in combat. The Union normally goes first, but the special rules state that the Confederates will go first in this one. Um, and I think on the second turn, all Union units must move one hex uh, in this direction here. I don't know if it's north, I guess it is. So, my basic uh, general plan is I'm going to... It looks to me like, and I've never played this before, that these two hexes here will be vacated by the Union. Uh, the Union only has to move units that are not in a, a Confederate zone of control. These two hexes here, the units are at their normal strength, so pretty much everything else, they're in some kind of a, a good defensive terrain, except for the woods. The woods don't really do anything. Um, so, it looks to me like these two hexes are key to breaking into uh, the Union um, Center, I guess. So that's where I'm going to concentrate the Confederate attacks. And I'll just spread them all out, but the main force is going to go right through into the center there. So, the Union doesn't have uh, much that it can do right now, so it's just going to react uh, for the moment. And uh, I'll come back after the Confederate move. Okay, here we are at the, basically the end of the Union players' um, movement phase on turn two. I, I may have misspoke on the uh, Union restrictions and stuff on turn one and everything. Basically, the Union doesn't even get a turn on turn one. It just starts uh, straight off with the Confederate movement and then combat. So then, at the beginning of turn two, all Union units have to move one hex to the north, which I have already done. So we are now going to start um, with the beginning of the Confederate player's turn, uh, his movement in combat. Um, basically, from the first turn, um, I just moved up the Confederates, um, just slowly moving them to the north or to the east. I know that. Uh, I didn't enter any Union zones of control because I knew they were going to have to move move uh, north and I didn't want to pin anybody down and uh, just wanted them to keep on moving to the north uh, that one turn and in these positions here with six movement points on a road I can pretty much cover any area I want uh, in the Union line so this turn we'll, I will see or should see the Confederates attack this gap and perhaps shore up the flanks and take this ground here. Um, basically, I think we're just going to see a push all the way through here and occupy this ground that the Union um, um, uh, left open for us. So I will come back probably at the end of the game turn two after the Confederate combat phase. Okay, here we are at the uh, 
end of the Confederate movement, and we're just going to do one attack this turn. This is turn two, uh, last part of turn two. Um, I'm going to attack this Union unit here, this five. We're going to attack with uh, 15, and then I'm going to use the two artillery units there. That's a four. And then a 1, that's another 5, so that's 20. 20 to 5 is going to be at 4 to 1. So, this, uh, I'm guaranteed not to get an attack or retreat, which uh, will make my units, uh, uh, whatever that attack or uh, effectiveness type rule is. So, we're going to go ahead and roll at 4 to 1. We roll a 2 at 4 to 1, which is very good. It forces the defender to retreat. So, I can't retreat up here because of the cavalry unit. I'm not going to allow cavalry and infantry stacking. So I guess I'll retreat just one hex back. Now the attacker can advance one unit. I think I will advance the nine. That'll pin all those units right there. Uh, they won't be able to move. Other units can move up uh, adjacent to them, however. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. So, anyway, that's the end of turn two.